Breaking news now. What can we deduce from the visuals of the Kim Jong Un Putin talks? They walked hand in hand through the shiny space center, their assistants following in lockstep behind them. They were positioned high above a launch pad, looking down into the hole from which rockets are fired into space. Later that day, at a banquet, they drank red wine and raised a glass to the union of their two outcast nations. Kim Jong un and Vladimir Putin's meeting in Russia's Far East has made for some spectacular visuals. The North Korean leader still has several days left of touring military facilities like shipyards and aircraft factories before returning home. The world's media had been waiting with bated breath as Kim Jong un slowly made his way across the border in an armored train. It took him nearly 40 hours to reach the Vostochny Cosmodrome, a space base in the far eastern corner of Russia, but he managed to keep the West guessing the entire time. Still, it was unclear what the meeting's purpose would be, especially in light of recent White House warnings that North Korea might sell arms to Russia. As Kim's train pulled up to the space station, Putin had already dispatched a welcoming committee to meet and greet him. While waiting for the North Korean leader's train to arrive, a red carpeted balustrade staircase was erected in midair. When Kim pulled up in his limo, Putin was already waiting for him outside the convention center. The two leaders shook hands in front of the cameras, and the images were immediately broadcast by state media. Both leaders recognize the importance of stagecraft, but Kim is especially fond of pomp and circumstance in his role as North Korea's supreme leader. According to North Korea expert Sarah Sun of the University of Sheffield, generations of mythology have been constructed around him, because he is the third in a line of supreme leaders. Domestic audiences, who will see this trip and parts of the meetings on television and in the newspaper, will form impressions of you as a leader during your time in office. In order to make North Korea look like a bigger player on the international stage than it is, it is crucial that Kim Jong un meet with the leaders of other countries on a one on one basis. Income for the North Korean state and proof that Kim is worthy of the attention of the leader of a major global power can be achieved through Russia's need for arms, despite the fact that sanctions remain extremely tight. Pyongyang had also launched two ballistic missiles, the first time this had been done without the leader present, about an hour before the two leaders met. Defiantly linking pariah state behavior in Europe and Asia, says Iwa University and Seoul professor Leif Eric Easley. But beyond the show and the bravado, observers question whether any actual agreements were reached. Almost nothing was made public. According to North Korean military expert and Kukman University professor Fyodor Tertitsky, as of now, it appears that there have been no substantial developments in the public domain. We saw a grand spectacle aimed at an international audience and secret deals made behind closed doors, both of which have yet to be fully explained. The West is worried that Russia will use the arms deal as a weapon in its conflict with Ukraine, but no specifics of the deal have been revealed. Moreover, analysts say Kim would have wanted food aid, economic assistance, and the sharing of military and technological know how, none of which were mentioned. Putin's cryptic comments that he might be able to assist Kim in his space and satellite endeavors are the only development that has been made public. Analysts say the significance of the venue choice was most apparent there. Both heads of state had to travel considerable distances to reach the state of the art spaceports. Which are located on the opposite side of the country from Moscow. First, the Russian leader's offer of limited space assistance was well within the scope of what he could feasibly extend to North Korea. Pyongyang has tried and failed twice this year to launch a spy satellite because its technology lags so far behind Russia's. Russian assistance in launching a satellite that North Korea can use to spy on its enemies is very different from an agreement to aid a rogue state in developing its nuclear and missiles program, which has been condemned and banned by the UN Security Council for years. Before the war, Russia was also seen as a potential mediator in North Korea's disarmament talks. 
Consequently, Professor Easley claims that Putin's thumbing his nose at UN Security Council resolutions by holding this week's meeting at the spaceport is equivalent to Putin thumbing his nose at UN Security Council resolutions. This should be a wake up call to all other UN member states about the need to redouble efforts to enforcing sanctions on Pyongyang, he said. Others, however, see the Cosmodrome location as a ploy to throw off the West and South Korea. Which severed ties with Russia after its invasion of Ukraine and adopted Western sanctions. Professor Easley speculates that Putin wants to use the summit as leverage against Seoul to prevent it from providing weapons to Ukraine and implies that Seoul might provide military technology to North Korea in retaliation. However, it is still unclear whether Russia would part with any of its space treasures or if it even considers North Korea's weapons to be more than a backup supply. Mr. Tertitsky notes that Putin's statements were cautious even in regards to satellite technology, not an explicit commitment to provide assistance but rather a strong implication that it may be considered. Despite the rhetoric surrounding weapons, he notes that trade between the two is, by South Korean estimates, virtually non existent. More than 95% of North Korea's trade revenue still comes from China. This leaves us uncertain whether this summit will yield any more concrete results than the fruitless 2019 meeting did, he says of the last time the two leaders met. It's been four years since that meeting, so Kim's rare trip is something that experts say shouldn't be discounted. This trip marked his first international travel in four years and came as his country slowly began to re engage with the outside world in the wake of the pandemic. It is widely believed that Putin ensured that he would be given a lavish welcome. Putin's signature Asia facing platform, the Eastern Economic Forum, has previously attracted the participation of Chinese and South Korean leaders, so the meeting could have easily taken place there. Instead, he traveled to meet Kim in an entirely new location, complete with red carpet, banquet, and brass marching band, to make Kim the star of the show. It's a respectful gesture toward Kim. Mr. Tertitsky suggests this move was made so Kim would feel appreciated. He adds that the message being sent to the West is just as important, and that it's about improving the public's impression of their relationship despite the lack of information. However, he stresses the importance of paying attention to the actions of both parties in this partnership. Kim and Putin are both skilled liars. Again, it's more important to look at what they actually do than what they say.